I have been listening to Smith Wigglesworth's sermons for days and all the way here. So I'm kind of like, really? It's like, come on, Lord, we're ready. <laughs> I'm right there with Pastor Barbara. I'm ready to get it done. So I have a little bit um, to talk about tonight. And um, kind of goes right on with uh, the praise and worship that we had tonight. And then the Lord has given me a word for the church, for this um, body of Christ that he calls it, Church of the Lord. House of the Lord is exactly what he said when he was giving me the word. I was just sitting there minding my business, and then I know to get that pen. So I just got the pen and started writing, and it just encouraged, encouraged me so much that God has placed me here that I can be a part of what God's got for this church because I'm telling you, we've waited and the wait is going to be so good for what's coming forth for this body right here. God has said a lot of, about this church to me and I wrote down what he wanted me to read, but in my spirit, I just feel such, I don't even know how to put it into words of how pleased the Lord is how pleased the Lord is with this body of Christ here. You know, I really, I, I have not been to different ch churches or I haven't been out there. Um, Pastor Barbara is the one that stepped me out of ministry, which I think you all know that years ago. And um, I was out of a church for quite a while. And then this is the only place it's like, here I am again, right back again. So, and I'm very happy to, to do so. Well, tonight, the first scripture the Lord gave me was on Luke 24, 49. And it's, behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry in this city of Jerusalem till you are endued with power from on high. And we know that the Holy Spirit was the promise. He is the promised one. He is the one that Jesus said would come and he promised and sent him. And he basically was not replacing Jesus, but he was in a way going to be, he's the one that is with us all the time. He's the one that talks to you daily. He's the one that comes when your tears are falling or when you're rejoicing, he's clapping his hands and rejoicing with you. Holy Spirit is a person. He's not just as some people call it, it but he is the Godhead. He's one of the Godheads. So the Holy, I'll just read it. The Holy Spirit was the promise of God that Jesus was talking about. Uh, he sent his spirit, one of the Godheads, to replace Jesus on this earth. The same spirit of God who resides in Jesus now resides in us. And that is one of the things that God wants us to get down inside of us. The same Holy Spirit that walked the earth with Jesus is the same Holy Spirit that's inside of us, the same power. We lack nothing less than Jesus. We lack nothing. We have the exact same power, and even Jesus said, and you will do even more. Greater works will you do. So I really feel that in this time, the Lord is really wanting us to get in, into our hearts, into our, our mind. Actually, it's our mind. That we don't walk around just powerless. We walk around with the same power of the Holy Spirit in us. We should be doing the same thing as Jesus. You know, I was listening to um, Smith as I was coming and it wasn't him, but it was somebody reading it. But it was with the same, you know, boldness that Smith had and would preach. And, you know, sometimes it does you so good to just listen to these old generals. It just builds your faith right up. And it's like, wait a minute. I have that same. That's the same one in me. He wants us to be able to believe in our hearts that we can do the same thing. I, I got all these notes, but you know what? The, the way that the Lord was showing me... If Jesus did it, and he only did what the Father, he only did what the Father did. Whatever he saw the Father doing, that's what he did. Whatever he heard the Father say, that's what he said. Whatever we have read in the word that Jesus did, we are to do. 
And we're thinking, well, why isn't this happening? You know, we're all wondering, why isn't this happening? You know, we're sitting around, we're waiting for God. But is God waiting for us, Pastor Barbara? Is he waiting for us to get into that place where we know that we know who we are in Jesus? You know, there's a big thing. There's a, it's a big, big, long horizon that you look across and you think, well, Jesus was the son of God. Where well, you are sons and daughters of God. He's made us the same. When, Jesus, when God looks at us, he only sees Jesus. He loves us as much as he loves Jesus. He doesn't love you any, any different. You're as, as righteous as Jesus. Can you say that one? But you are. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So anyway, listen, in, uh, listen a little bit to, to Smith Wigglesworth and some of you who I know Pastor Barbara does. I mean, it was nothing for him to just smack somebody across the room and then they were healed. I hope God doesn't use, <laughs> use us that way. But the, what he had so deep inside of him, you know, he never learned to read except he read, his wife taught him to read by using the Bible. That was his, that was his uh, education to learn to read and it was the Bible only. He only read the Bible. He didn't have need for anything else. And so that built his faith up. You know, maybe we should all, pointing back at myself, be the same way. You know, the more you read the Bible, oh, don't you just sit there and then you just find something, nuggets in that Bible, and you think, no, oh, I didn't see that the last time. You know, the things that, uh, simple things, sometimes it is for me. I'm, I'm not going to tell on myself. But some of those, sometimes you, you start reading the Word, and it's like, wow. Such revelation comes, and it's only because the Holy Spirit is right there with you. He's never left us. You know, I want to get to learn. I want to know the Holy Spirit so much. You know, as much as we cry out for Jesus, I have this cry in my heart to know the Holy Spirit because he is the one that I wake up every morning. If I say good morning, Jesus, I am all also saying it's good morning to him because they're all one. I, I, I've had a problem where you separate Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. And I used to say, oh, if I don't say something to God, then is he going to feel bad because I'm always addressing Jesus? And I, I, you know, still go through that a little bit, you know. It's like you, but they're, you know, the oneness of them and that they've pulled us into that oneness. You know, you have such a love for Jesus. I, my walk with Jesus happened with a big bang. And I just thought that's what it was. I just thought everybody had that big bang, you know, it was run out the door. What Lord, what Lord, you know, the whole thing cry because nobody saved in my family. Are they going to hell? You know, I went through that whole thing. And, but I found that with my relationship with Jesus, he always pointed to the father. He will always point to the father because that's what he was sent for. And if you read the word, the only thing that Jesus does points to the Father, always points to the Father. So there's a time in your relationship with him. I think you can understand this, where it's, all, it's not putting Jesus in the back, but he's got you so focused on the Father He's got you so in love with the Father that it's like there's Jesus. But you have to look behind you and see Jesus just smiling and so excited because he did his commission, what he wanted to do in your life. He wanted to bring you to that place with the Father where you are just one, where you are just one, and then your faith builds upon the Father. It's not a separation from Jesus because they are one. Jesus is my first love. He will always be my love. But that part of the Father, I mean, when you think about the creator of all, loving you beyond what you could even imagine, bestowing that love on you daily, pouring out that mercy 
that kindness on you because he loves you. Can you imagine sending your child to die for this ugly world? <laughs> for these people, you know, some of the people you cross, not all of you because you're beautiful, but you know what I'm saying. Can you imagine sending one of yours to save all the brokenhearted, all the lost, and that's what the Father did? I didn't know if the Holy Spirit was going to have me talk about the Father, but... But in that, that's where God, that's where Jesus is drawing you. He's drawing you to the place of the Father, of seeing the creator of who he is. Not just God created the whole earth and all that lies within. No. But going into that deep place of who he is to you. You know who Jesus is, your Savior, and how much he's done. But there's a revelation is what I hear the Holy Spirit saying. There's a revelation common of who the Father is to you. He may be your daddy. He may be your creator. But when he comes as your father, there is a, a statue. There's just a, a plateau there of, of, of that name, Father God, Almighty God a reverence, and that is what's coming back in the church. Yes, the church is talking about Jesus, but there is coming a move. There's coming a move that the Father's going to be known to the church, to the true church, to the ones that he has called his chosen, the ones that he has said are my own. And this revelation is going to come, but it's going to come with signs, wonders, miracles, because you're going to see it happen. You're all going to see it happen. And when this hits, it's going to be the Father that you're going to see. It's going to be the revelation of the Almighty God, not just, you know, I can't say anything about churches because they're God's people, but, you know, whatever's going on in the churches, some of it's going to stop, and there's going to be such a reverence. There's going to be such a reverence. Remember years ago, Pastor Barbara, you probably remember, when it was prophesied, pastors would die right in the pulpits. Mm, the Holy Spirit on me. If you aren't leading the sheep, not you, if the pastors who are not leading these sheep on the way of the path of Jesus to the Father, we need to pray for them. We need to pray for these uh, churches. I mean, geez, I saw an, another fall. It was like another big known thousands and thousands and thousands of people following this pastor. God's revealing. He's revealing so, you know, in this move, there are going to be signs and wonders and miracles. There's going to be things what the Lord has said to me that's greater than what any man has ever heard about, has seen. This move that's coming is going to be so much greater than anything that we've, we've known. I only know what the Lord has been saying to me. That in that place, remember, where was it, Pastor Barbara, in the um, Scotland? What was that called when they had the revival? The three women that prayed and prayed and prayed. And God brought revival to Scotland because of those three elderly women praying. And so many fell out in the spirit, in the fields, the, the bars were empty, things were, I mean, this, when this move happened and the Lord said, that's nothing compared to what's coming. So we can't even imagine what it's going to be. Now with the glory, the glory is wonderful if you're walking with the Lord, but if you're not, mm, hold on to your seat because it's not going to be pretty. The evil's going to come down. You know, I, I know you probably have heard a lot of this prophesied through different prophets. I don't go by what, the, what I hear from other 
other prophets. I go by what I hear from the Spirit of the Lord, which he's been telling me for months. But um, God wants to do something with the body of Christ that's never happened before. And we can't compare it to anything because we haven't seen it yet. But I know right here, this is lined up. This church is lined up. If it remains here, I don't think it's going to remain here. I think God's got uh, another plan that's in the making for this church, for this body, as I should call it. I probably should have stuck to my notes. I never stick to notes. What the Lord is saying now, he wants you to get ready. He wants you to get ready to be a part of what's going to happen. And through this whole thing that he's been saying to me, when he talked about the promise you know, of the Father, when the Holy Spirit came, they all waited around. Jesus is the one that brought them into one accord. They didn't bring themselves into it. Jesus is the one that's brought you into one accord. But what the Lord is saying, you have to look, you know, in the Bible and look at, look at, go into Acts and really study that because that's going to be the open door for what you're going to, for what you're going to be doing and what you're going to learn. If there's not one accord... God will remove who isn't. God will remove whoever's not in one accord because that's the type of move that God's getting ready to do. It's going to be orderly and it's going to be lined up with the way of the Lord operates. It's not going to be anything to do with the way that man operates. It's going to be what God says and then that's what it's going to be. That's what's going to come forth. And God is saying that, you know, while you're waiting, build up your faith and continue to ask God for this great move that's coming. We are to call it forth as God, he asked me to do that, to continue to call forth this move. We are not just to wait, but wait with great expectations in our heart that just as God moved in Jesus, he will move in us also. You have to expect God to move in you. The Lord gave me an example of riding a bicycle. Most of us have learned to ride a bike, I would think. But anyway, what was the power in that bicycle? The pedals. You activate your faith by doing. If you're not activating your faith, you're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. So the pedals were what brought the power. And once you activate your faith, it's like, and I'm guilty with this too, but I'm trying. If you don't see it happen, don't stop. Don't stop. So many of us, well, it didn't happen. Keep on. Keep knocking on that door. Keep knocking and knocking and knocking until the king gets tired of hearing you knocking and pestering him. Keep doing it. Keep activating your faith. Once you get to the place where you, and I'm sure we've, we've done it. We got to the place, it's like, oh, God answered that prayer. You have to get that right there, that victory, and continue to build upon it, upon it, upon it. And don't stop. I'm not giving up. I am not giving up. I've seen God move too many times in my life. And there, there's things that are on the plate right now that, all of us want him to do. And if we just sit back and wait for God to do it, guess what? It may not happen. I'm not going to say it's not happening. I'm not God. It may not happen. But if you activate your faith, if you really go at it, get on that bicycle and start those pedals and see how far you're going to get. So many times I feel we get to a place that we stop and it was right around the corner. It's right around the corner. I don't believe that the signs, miracles, and wonders are even being taught in the, in the churches anymore. I don't, I don't believe that the, the tongues are coming forth. You know, there's power in all of that. There's power. The gifts of the Spirit are for today. I remember coming in this church. Oh, I would be drunker than a... I would be so drunk in the spirit realm 
Pastor Barbara walked by us, and we were just like, whoa, this woman carrying this anointing. And it's never changed. It's never changed. But the thing of it is that anointing is there to share. Every one of you, I bet you could stand right up here, lay hands on somebody and pray for them, and you'll see something happen. We need to exercise our faith and stop sitting back and waiting for somebody else to do it for us. We need to do it. We need to be brave. We need to be out there. Expect the Holy Spirit when you're in, that, in the grocery store or wherever. Expect the Holy Spirit to do something through you. Even if you don't do it, expect that he's done something. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for touching that person. I'm continuously praying, seeing a car broke down. Oh, Father, send the angels to help that person. Put the blood of Jesus over them. You know, they're on the highway. Saw them on the way. Constantly be praying, constantly be putting it out there to the Father and watch what he's doing and believe it. I, I've got a heart for animals that's, it's just whatever. But maybe I'm going to have a sanctuary for animals. <laughs> maybe that's going to happen. But I have this thing for animals. I'm just, oh my goodness, I can't look at some things. Uh, my husband used to put on those nature programs. Like, don't put that on. That lion's going after that. Don't do that. Don't even put that on there. I can't. I can't stand to watch it. But I know when I pray for the animals, God answers the prayers. He answers the prayers. My prayers for these little animals, and I see the results. So guess what? Is he building me for some? You know, to maybe pray for a human and seeing it happen. I believe so. I believe everything that I do, I believe every prayer that I pray is answered. I have no doubt in my mind whatsoever, whether I see it or not, I truly believe that it's answered. And I, I just want everyone to be that way. You know, um, with my family, I, I'm kind of like Jesus, not accepted in their own town. <laughs> but if they need prayer, you know, call mom. You know, that type of thing. But you want to be out there. You want people to see Jesus in you. We're being delivered every day from something. We're being delivered every day from something. I was sitting with the Lord the other night, and it's like having patience. You know, that old saying, don't pray for patience. Don't pray for praise, friends. You're going to be tested. But there's a, the Lord, and, you know, I'll, I'll say things because I don't care. God touches me. I, you know, I know that he's going to touch other people. I was upset about something and where I had lost my temper. I don't want to be losing my temper. And the Lord took me back. He took me back to where it came from. For all these years, not that I'm an angry person, I'm not. But, you know, there's times you just, oh, gosh, Lord, I wish I hadn't acted that way or this or that. God brought me back and showed me where it came from. And so that's the part right there, to allow the Lord to minister to you. You don't want anything holding back the ministry that he's getting ready to do. Nothing at all. You just want to be able to go forth Go forth in the faith. I'm sorry I didn't read all my notes. But God wants you to be in that place where you see it happen, where you know that your, your prayers have been answered. No matter what you're going through, no matter what it is, you have to believe in your heart. Because the word says, if you believe the Father has heard your prayers... When you believe that you've prayed to the Father and you believe that he's heard your prayers, guess what? You get your petition. That's the greatest scripture. That when you pray and you believe in your heart that God has heard your prayers, he's answered them. May not be exactly what, the, you know, we've heard it a thousand times, it might be exactly what you w wanted it to be or would like to see it to be, but he's answered. God never Let's a prayer go that he does not answer. So tonight, it's a short one, I'm sorry, but I think there's ministry. So um, I want to read the prophecy over this church. And when I read it, I want you to take it in. 
And I want you to think about it. Think about it for yourself and the part that you are with this church. Because you want to be here. You want to be a part of this. You want to be in this church. And yes, God's going to be doing it all over the world. I know that he is. But for him to just stop me and get your pen and to start with the church when then I don't doubt it. This is for the Lighthouse Church. This is what the Lord is saying. They are coming into a new realm, my chosen ones. And that's what he's calling you. They will know me in a greater measure as their hearts so desire. So you must be crying out, Lord, I want to know you more. What they have spoken in the quiet times shall come to pass. So your quiet times, in the times of your prayers for the Lord, in those quiet times when you're so sincere and you're talking to him, they're going to come to pass. No one shall be left out, says the Lord. They all, and that is all capitalized, the Lord had me put, all, all capitalized. They all are coming into this new realm that I have made ready for them. So it's right before you. If he's made it ready, it's there. The anointing I have placed on their lives is coming forth. You have anointings inside of you that you don't even know you have because God is saying they're coming forth, each and every one of you. I'm excited about that. I'm excited to see how these gifts in this church are going to unfold. They shall bring forth the gifts of the Spirit in order. Now, that's a big one right there, isn't it, Pastor Barbara? You don't want any disorder going on in the church. And God is saying he's bringing them in order. One will speak in tongues and another shall bring forth the interpretation. That excites me so much. That, how long has it been since we've heard that? The oneness shall not leave, but remain so. The oneness in this church. I have chosen these people of mine for such a time as this. They were called one by one to come to gather in this place. I think that's so beautiful what the Lord is saying. You didn't come here on your own. You did not come here on your own. It is a meeting place now, but I shall call it up into the realms of the heavenlies, and it shall be called the place where the glory resides. No longer will it be a plateau where miracles have not resided. No, it shall be a resting place of my glory. A resting place where I will send my presence, my glory in a way that has never been known to man. There that is. I want you to take this in what he's saying. Come, my children, be at rest, for tonight I have spoken. What you heard this night has already been established in heaven. Tonight and tonight alone, you will be shaken to your inner core for what I'm about to do. You will never be the same again. You have asked for my glory to fill this place, and my glory shall do just that. This night, it is done in the spirit realm. It's already been done in the spirit, so guess what? There's no turning it back. The night is the beginning of great happenings. Why? Because this is the house of the Lord. It is called the house of the Lord because I am honored. That almost made me cry. That God would look at you and say you have honored him. Can he say that about a lot of churches? I don't know. Hear this, my children, as I speak forth the blessings upon this house. Many will return who once remained in this house. A gathering is about to take place that will return the saints who once visited this house. Maybe you know that, Pastor Barbara. There will be those who have lost their way but will return back 
to this house, my house. Now forget the past hurts and move on. Forget those things that once were so important to you and let go. This is what I'm talking about, what he did with me. Let all this go. It's not even worth it. It's not even worth it. Do not allow unforgiveness, any of that mess. Just push it out. Get rid of it. For I, your father, have a new plan. A new plan to activate my power through this earth. It is coming fast and furious. Be prepared and let go of all that you once perceived and be set free from old bondages. This is what the Lord says. Hooray is being shouted in the realm of spirit. <laughs> Hooray. Hooray for a new day has arrived. Are you ready to be a part of what I have established over this house? You are ready, the Lord is saying. The Lord is saying you are ready. Tonight, as you stand before me, I will come to you and be a part of you. If you believe, if you really believe, God will come to you tonight and be a part of you. You will feel my presence engulf you and lift you higher, higher than you've ever felt. It is time you shall receive endued power from on high. I took this very serious. I took it very, very serious because I know without a shadow of a doubt, this is the Lord's word. It's not just another prophecy coming forth. It is the word of the Lord, what he wants to do in this house. It is the word of the Lord, what he wants to do with each one of you, calling you chosen ones. You can't call yourself that. I have seen in the spirit realm a dedication in this church that I've not seen in the spirit over anywhere else. And I can just flatter words and do all that kind, but I'm, I'm telling the truth. I'm telling you what the Lord has showed me. He brought me back here. I didn't come here. He brought me back and he told Pastor Barbara, I'm just wandering around, praising the Lord and having a good time with Jesus in my own house. He's not called me to any other church. I have visited. I visited one other, Herb's and his new wife's church. But I have not gone anywhere else. And what the Lord, you know, I want so much to impart in you what I am feeling the Holy Spirit is saying. But you have to catch it with your own spirit. You have to believe in your heart that you're a part of something that's so miraculous. You know, we've waited a long time. You can wait. You can continue to wait when you know that God has spoken to you. I'm just a stranger in town. This church has been established, but it's been established in righteousness. It's been established in love and dedication to the almighty God and Jesus as a savior. But now God wants to show himself more of who he is to you. He wants to bring you into a higher realm. He wants to take you into a place where you will be used for signs, wonders, miracles that will follow the word. He's put an invitation out tonight. If you'd like to come up, if you want to be a part of what the Lord is saying, that he's going to come and be a part of you, that you're going to feel his presence. It's not me saying it. It's the Holy Spirit. I had a dose of it at home. And it's, it's a part that I want you just not to come up to this altar and just feel, feel something and then go out the door and it's gone. You have to capture what God is saying, what God has been saying through Pastor Barbara. You have to really want this in your heart. You really want to be used of God. You want to be a part of this. You want to see the captives set free. You want to see people get healed. Aren't you tired of nothing? 
I want to see it happen. And I'm determined it's going to because God is saying it. He's saying it. And you've got to activate your faith. Get on that bicycle, use those pedals, and get somewhere with the power of God. Lay hands on the sick. You don't see them move, keep laying hands on them. Keep praying. Don't stop because you don't see it. When God comes and he pours this upon you, you want to be the one that say, yes, God, use me. Yes, Lord, I want to be a part of this. And so tonight, I want to anoint you. And I know normally we don't lay hands, but I feel God wants me to lay hands on, on you. And you're going to feel the power of God come in you. And I want you to take that in, and I want you to really pray about it. And really, God, what are you doing in me? You've touched me. What are you, what are you doing in me, Lord? And there's a hunger within you. I know it. This young couple right here, you're so called to the Lord. I know I've prayed over you, but you get ready. It's going to explode. It's going to explode. And it's not just the Hispanic that you're going to. No. God sees, he doesn't see color. He doesn't see anything separating us. We're as one. Black, white, yellow, red, green. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Stay as one. You're going to become in such oneness between you two. Do not allow the enemy to come in and bring any strife in your, in your, your household whatsoever. Bring a oneness. Work on it and say, no, devil, I'm not having any part of you. He comes all the time. He's always lying. It's the lion's spirit, always coming, trying to separate, trying to separate what God wants. It's important. It's very important. And if you want prayer tonight, if you want to be hands laid on you, it's up to you. But you can come up front.